Okay, we're finally ready to start writing our first program. So I've gone ahead and created a new project already in Visual Studio. If you're working without Visual Studio, you can simply create a new file and then you can follow along from there and, and type and save it as you go. If you are using Visual Studio, what you should do if you want to create a new project for C++, at least for the sake of this class, is hit Create New Project and then you'll be given this. What you want is, you, so you can select the language here, I've selected C++, what we want is a console application. After that, it will ask you to give it a directory and a name. So I've gone ahead and created one of those already. You'll notice if you do create it using Visual Studio, it'll give you some text and we're really just going to fill in almost the same stuff here. So as a starting point, what you'll always need for any C++ program is main. We'll explain exactly what this means later with the int and the parentheses, but for now just know it's a starting point for the program. Any program in C++ needs some sort of function called main in order to know where exactly to start running the program, because we may have code elsewhere, and this really just tells it where it needs to start at. So by putting this, the code will start running at exactly line 3. Now, let's just say we want to print something to the screen. I think that's kind of like the most, uh, the most basic thing we can do. What we're going to need is some place to write it to and then the actual text to write. In order to do that in C++, what we'll need is the library called iostream. So I'm going to type include iostream here. And what this will do is it will include code written by somebody else, specifically in a library called iostream. An IO stream contains a bunch of different things specifically for printing and formatting and stuff like that. So it's exactly what we need if we want to print something to the screen. Now what I'm also going to do, and I encourage you to do as well, but you don't necessarily need it, is I'm going to use namespace standard. I'll explain in more detail what a namespace is later, but basically it just lets us know what kind of uh, container to get some of the specific things from. So we're going to use a thing called C out in a second here, and that belongs to namespace standard. So just so I don't have to keep typing the namespace standard over and over again, I'm going to include it here. Now let's get to the actual printing. In C++, the way you do this is with C out, and then this thing called the extraction operator, which we'll, uh, we'll look at here in a second. And what I want it to print is hello world. So it'll print that string. I want this message to go to the screen. One way that I usually remember, because there are uh, two different versions of this, there's the extraction and the insertion. This, this one points towards where the thing is going. So we're going to send this string here to C out, which C out represents the standard output. For the sake of our program here, that's going to be the terminal, which we'll see in a second. It's just the little black window that you'll see. And if you're in Linux, it's the thing you're basically typing in. What we're going to do after that is I'm also going to send another thing called an end line here. And what an end line is, it's kind of like hitting an enter on your keyboard. It just starts a new line. In C++, it also does a little bit of other stuff too. Um, mainly flushes a buffer, which is where the string, this text is stored. So I would recommend using this, but we'll go over our alternative when we recompile this in a second. So there we go. This is pretty much the most basic program we can make. It's going to print this message, hello world, to the screen. Now, we've written this code, but as far as the computer knows, this doesn't really mean anything yet, because the computer doesn't necessarily recognize C++ directly. Now, what we need to do is actually compile this so that the computer can recognize to run it. So the way we do that is with a thing called a compiler, which is going to take our source code here written in C++ and turn it into something that the computer can actually understand. If you're using Visual Studio like I am, then you'll have this little green button up at the top that runs a debugger. It's a little bit different than how normal compilation works, and we'll go over how to compile on the school servers in a moment. I just want to give this as kind of a, a starting point so we can see our program run. If you want to run your program, you can simply hit the little green arrow or press F5 and it will take a second to compile it. 
I'll say build started here at the bottom, and then it should run it in a moment. So here it will open up a terminal, and then it'll take a moment to run, and you'll see that it says hello world, which is what we printed out. So our program works. Now, um, one other thing to maybe note if you're using Visual Studio, is sometimes you do have to hit the keyboard before it starts running. So uh, it, it can be a little bit strange about that. But we can hit another key to close it. Let's go over how to compile this on an actual Linux computer now using the terminal. So I've already opened up our directory here. If you're using Visual Studio like I am, it will create a project. And we have here a project called Hello World, which is what I actually ran. And we have something called Hello World.cpp, which is the exact file I'm writing. If you're not using Visual Studio, then you should have written your own individual file like this, and you should save it using the .cpp extension or .cxx. That, those are the two main ones that we'll use to compile C++ programs. Basically, it just knows, or lets the compiler know that it's a C++ program that it's about to compile. So you can save this using a text editor or something like Visual Studio or an IDE, and you'll get a file and you'll want to give it the extension cpp or cxx. Now, again, I'm assuming that everybody has already figured out how to connect to the server for SFTP and SSH so that we can transfer files and so that we can actually run commands. Um, again, that's one of the previous videos, so I would say check that out if you haven't already. What we'll do here is I'm going to copy this over to my directory CS135 here. So this right hand side is the school server and the left hand side is my computer. I'll just drag it over and you'll see that it copies it. So we have it here. And again, I've already connected with an SSH. So this is a terminal representing the actual school server. So I'll, let me zoom in a little bit here. We'll change our directory to the CS135 directory that I just copied it to. And if I type ls, you'll see that hello world.cpp is right there. Now, what we want to do is we don't have a big green button when we're running on Linux or in a terminal. So we're going to have to compile using command line, which is totally OK. What we'll do in order to do that is we're going to need to give the name of the compiler, which for our class would be G++, and then the name of the program that we want to compile hello world.cpp. Now, when you compile, if everything is good, you'll see nothing happens. And that's actually exactly what you want. So my program will compile because it's written correctly. And we'll go over an error that might happen in a moment here. That way we can see what would happen if the compiler doesn't work. If you see nothing, then that's good. That would mean that you did everything exactly right. So we're good right now. Now I'm going to ls again just to see what the directory looks like, and you'll see we have this new thing here called a.out. a.out is an executable. That is something that we can actually run. So earlier I said that the C++ code isn't something that computer understands directly. But a.out is something that it can actually execute. So the compiler takes in our hello world.cpp program, and it turns it into something that the computer can understand. By default, it calls it a.out. Now, in order to run something in Linux, you use dot slash. So dot slash will execute whatever file you want it to. It can be an executable, or it could be something else like a script. But for the sake of this class, it'll just be executables that we've gotten from our actual compiler. Now, dot slash will run it, and I want to give the name of the file, which is a.out. And if I do that, it will run the program. So again, we get hello world similar to the terminal that we had or the output that we had in the terminal on my computer as well. So program works here, program works on the school server on Sally. Now let's go over what might happen if you don't write a correct program. So here everything is written kind of expected. We have a C out and then we have just this, uh, this end line here and everything's kind of formatted correctly you could say now if you have a error whether that be a syntax or semantics error then the compiler can potentially catch it so the compiler will always catch syntax errors which we'll go over what that means later and it can sometimes catch semantics errors 
So let's say instead of writing C out hello world, I wrote something that wasn't formatted correctly. So if I wrote C out H and then N line, then this won't work. And you can see Visual Studio will already point it out. The reason this doesn't work is whenever we want to print a message or something called a string, we need these double quotes around it. Now here I've just given H and this could mean something else that we'll go over later, but currently because it's not a message and it doesn't have any other meaning it shouldn't compile and you'll see here that it says identifier h is undefined basically it just means i don't really know what that means because it's not a message it doesn't have those double quotes around it and it's not defined in some other way now let's try to compile that on the school server and we'll just see what kind of error we get there again i'll drag it over and if you already have an existing file, it will ask you if you want to overwrite in FileZilla. I'll just click OK. And now if I recompile, ah, maybe something to note is because a compiler takes a source code and generates an executable, you will need to recompile every time you do something different. Right now, if I run a.out, it still has the old program that I previously compiled because it doesn't base it off the source code, it bases it off the executable that the compiler actually generates. So I need to update the executable in order to get something new when I run the program. So in order to do that, we're going to have to recompile. I'll do that with G++ Hello World again. And you'll see that it, it says something similar to what Visual Studio says. It says H was not declared in this scope, and uh, that's pretty much the uh, the same error that we got on Visual Studio. It's phrased a little bit differently, but it means the same thing. So like I said earlier, if you do get something out from the compiler, then you know you may have made a mistake. An error is specifically something that is going to keep it from finishing compiling. So it didn't output anything here because we had an error. If you get a warning though, it should still output something and a warning is more of like a suggestion, whereas an error is something that it can't fix. Anyways, I think that about covers the basics as far as printing goes. Let's do a little bit more here. I said earlier that we should use endline in C++ to print things, but it may be a good idea to know the alternative to it, since in a, lot of, a lot of other languages do it this way too. Now, when we're printing, there are certain characters that mean special things when you go to print them. So the first one we'll learn here is a line feed. Now, it's probably better seen here when we run it in the terminal on the school server. If I do dot slash a dot out and then hello world, you'll notice it starts a new line and then you can see the terminal show up again. So it gives my username and asks me for a prompt. Now, if I remove this end line, which I, we've done here, let's recompile really quick. Okay, so we've copied it over, we'll recompile. And this time it does succeed because it's written correctly at least. If I go back to dot slash a dot out to run it, you'll see that it prints hello world and then there's no space between my username, um, which is prompting for the command and the hello world that it just printed. So that end line basically starts a new line as far as the printing goes, which makes it look a bit nicer. Now, another way to do this is with the special characters I said earlier. Whenever you want to do a special character, it always starts with the backslash. And then for a new line, it's the letter N. So again, I'm going to retransfer this back to the school server just so it's easier to see. If I recompile it so that I update my executable and dot slash A dot out, scrolled up a little bit, you'll see it again prints hello world and then there's a space after it. So I could do this a bunch of different times. So if I wanted three lines, let's just say I could put three backslash ends and it'll do three new lines. Ah, I'm sorry, we don't really need that um, right here. All right, 
So let's recompile this one more time. And you'll see if I put three backslash ends, then we get the first line feed here, the second line feed here, and the third line feed there. That's pretty good. So now we know how to do line feeds. And I would recommend knowing this way because this is the way that most languages do it. C++ is a little bit special in that it has the end line, although end line does have some extra things that come with it. So I recommend using end line if you're doing C++, but definitely know the backslash n because it works on pretty much every language. Now maybe the last thing we'll finish with here is going over a few other special characters. Now maybe I want these actual quotation marks in my code or like in the message that I'm printing. So if I wanted to make this hello world where the hello world is in quotation marks, you'll see it gives me an error. And that's because whenever it tries to find a message or a string, it's going to look to find two groups of quotes and then the things in between them are the message. So by typing this, it doesn't actually make a message where it's a quotation mark hello world and then a quotation mark and then that. It's an empty message and then hello world, which means nothing to the compiler, and then another empty message. So we're going to have to fix this. Again, if we want some sort of special character, the way we do that is with the backslash. So when I type a backslash and then the double quote, it's going to make it the character quotation mark rather than something that the compiler notices. I'm going to do that with this one as well. So you'll see here that we still have a quotation mark on the outside, the left and the right, and then a character for the quotation mark and another character for the quotation mark. So this instead, which I'll just run here locally, will print hello world in quotation marks, let's zoom in a little bit, rather than print hello world and have a message, um, two messages that are empty. So if you want a quotation mark, you'll need to put a backslash in front of it. And the same thing goes with some other special characters as well. I think that about does it for the basics on printing. In the next part, we'll start going into some of the data structures and, uh, and data types that exist in C++ and what they mean.